watching uh, on YouTube uh, a girl who went around the world and she briefly visited Sweden. But she didn't see very much of Sweden. She was only, only briefly here. So I thought, well, I can also go around but, and see some interesting places in Sweden. And I thought I can do it in the summer when the sub weather is better. But I'll anyway start with my favorite place here during the winter in Westerås, which is, Westerås is the town where I live. And I'm currently uh, driving around the bay that Westerås is located around. It's called Westerås Fjärden. Uh, Fjärd is a narrow bay um, towards Björnö. And Björnö is an island on the east side of the bay. And I live on the west side of the bay. So on this island there are some animals, uh, two different types of deer which is, is in Swedish are called um, dovjord and uh, rådjur and there are some smaller animals like rabbits and squirrels in the summer there's also lots of birds but now in the winter time the birds have moved to warmer areas south at winter on a beautiful winter day like this we don't get so many beautiful winter days in Sweden nowadays but this today is a beautiful winter day so now I'm arriving closing in on Bjarne it is a beautiful place it's a natural preservation area um, so that means the forests on the island it's not grown for you know wood but it's just a natural forest that just grows uh, and uh, the only trees that are cut are uh, around the trails so that there doesn't fall so it doesn't fall down the trees uh, on the people who are walking in the trails they have recently built this new bridge that lamp over there it's the last thing they are working on cleaning up after the old bridge now I am on the island So I will park my car on the first parking lot to the right. And then I will go into the darkness to the left. To the right you can see maybe uh, some lights due, uh, between the trees. That's the five and two and a half kilometer track. They both start in the same place. But to the left there are no lights. That's where the 10 kilometer trail starts. And of course that is where I will go. Because it is much nicer walking in the dark when there are no light pollution. So here is the start and finish of the 10 km trail. So now I'm about 500 meters into the trail. And over there is a skiing hill, Björnebacken. It is two people over there. So I didn't want to film those people. They had the kids with them uh, at the hill because the kids were actually skiing. And there was a storm last weekend or a few days ago. You can see this branch over here has freshly fall down almost over the trail where it's possible to go get through uh, over here and the lake is over there but you can't see it it's actually frozen now you can walk on the ice so uh, after the next hill that's one of the spots where you might spot deers and at night when I have a light like this I can see the reflection of the deer's eyes in the dark. It's actually quite cool but I don't think the GoPro can catch it. So here after this bridge is the first place where I can maybe spot Deers. And they are usually in this big field to the left. 
sometimes they are also here to the right. No, oh, they are here in the first spot. And those lights you can see over there are uh, um, the five kilometer trail. Uh, and it's about four kilometers into the five kilometer trails over there. So that's the high point. One, uh, uh, I think it's the highest point of the five kilometer trail over there. There's another high point in the middle of Björn. Björn has two parts, the northern and the southern part. And in the middle there's a waste that's quite narrow. I think it's only 200 meters waste. There you can see footprints from, from there. So they went through here where there is no fence from one side to the other. But now they're somewhere else. Now the 10 km trail actually goes together with a 5 km tra trail for one kilometer and then the 10 km trail breaks off again into a very very beautiful part of Vienna on the south half. So the, that has a, South Park has an almost magical forest. It feels like entering a fairy tale when you go into the woods on the south side. Yes. Now I'm on the part that is common between the 10 and 5 kilometer trail. So uh, you should be able to see something here, at least. From the Swedish winter which is not so common nowadays. Last year we barely had any snow all winter. But this year we are lucky because we have snow. And the last weeks have been very nice. But unfortunately it doesn't come every year. These kind of nice winter days. When the snow is just perfect. It's not slippery. And it's white, it's not too hot, so it's melting, it's not too cold, so we're freezing, it's minus three degrees at the moment. It's just perfect. But this Tankner Trail is actually listed among the top ten trails in all Sweden. Uh, trails for jogging or running. So it has a couple of a pretty good hills, the 10 km trail, one hill after 5 km and one hill after 9 km. The trees over here almost falling into the water and as you can see the water is ice. So that below is the lake, frozen lake. And it has a small bridge going out into the water. So, but I would not recommend going out on the ice here because it might be bad ice. There is one part of the river that is plugged and that part is considered safe. So you can ride or walk, uh, ice skate there or walk. So here where I am now, here's the waste of the island. So the water actually starts here. It is frozen and over there it's ah, 200 meters that way, there's ice. Some of the trees here are older, that one over there is pretty big, and some are younger. So this is natural forest, not the cultivated forest. Okay, so here the 5 km and 10 km tracks breaks off, and now I'm going, wandering off into the dark. I light my headlamp. So here the south part starts and you can immediately see out there, if you can see something, the forest here is quite stunning. You could almost expect a troll or something stepping out, or a giant but stepping out of the woods at any time. Oh, 
kids with their parents up that hill, skiing hill. I think there's nobody else in the woods here tonight. I'm all alone. Yeah, in here is Bjarne Borg. That's a house. A pretty nice house, actually. So if I come back this summer, when everything's green, and it's good lightning, lighting, I'll walk past Bjarne Borg. So, <laughs> this looks like something from Fallout 4. Now I'm really in roads, not on the tank road track, not on any track, this is a private road. At the end of this road, I think there's an old man who lives there. I talked to him once, and I'm not in the track. Bjorn Ear means Bear Island. And Bjorn Ear with an M at the end, that's a, what do you say, definite form. So in English you would say, say the island, but in Swedish you say Ear with an M at the end instead of the to make a definite form. So an indefinite form, that's an island. In Swedish, in English you can say o or un. In Swedish you can say en or et. In this case, en ö. An island, en ö. But some other words have et instead. So this track is called mil spåret. Mil is the Swedish mile, it's 10 kilometers. Spor. Spor is Swedish for trail or track. And et at the end, the et at the end, that's definite spor. So that means the 10 kilometer trail. Mil spåret. And that's where I am now. If you look in nature, a large box. So, if you wonder how this landscape was formed, it was during the last ice age. So there was like one kilometer of ice above us here. Maybe two kilometers of ice, lots of ice. And the weight of the ice crushed these rocks. And this was not so long ago, it's just 10,000 years ago when the ice started to melt so that these rocks were formed. They are pretty sharp at the edges. It's because, um, yeah, there have, hasn't been so much erosion in 10,000 years. In the Itchy Boots videos, she visits places where there has been lots of erosion during millions of years. But here in Sweden, they only have 10,000 years of erosion, so. Rocks are sharp. Sometimes you can find one of these large rocks alone on maybe a farmland. So there's just plants growing and then a large rock in the middle. So the scientific explanation is that the ice, it was taken there by the ice when the ice started melting and moving. But in the belief of people, especially on the countryside, we call it the throne of the giant, or yet the cast in Swedish. And that is uh, the story is that they thought that giants lived here for thousands of years ago. And uh, or maybe only hundreds of years ago. And for some reason giants didn't like churches. So the giant would take up this huge rock and throw towards the church. And sometimes you can find this yet the castle for the giant where there's no church nearby. Well then there might be another explanation. The giant was maybe carrying a 
carrying the rod to the church, but his shoes got worn out. So he got angry and just put down the rock and walked away. But this is what it looks like in a natural forest. You have dying trees and dead trees. There are some insects that thrive in the dead trees. And in a grown forest that is grown to sell wood, well, those insects won't live there. So there are lots of animals that can only live in a natural forest like this. There is, for instance, a specific type of frog, I think, here on Bjarnan Island. I can show you that this summer. And I th I'm gonna have to look it up, but I think that frog is a little bit rare. So in some parts of the Tankelotus Trail, the frogs are all over, all over the track. Uh, when there are new born, they're just running over the track and you can hardly go through the trail without stepping on a frog. Bicycle stops yeah, right here. There's ice. All the way to Esteros. And you can see the lights of Esteros on the other side of the bay. If you hear some spooky sound, the sound comes from the ice. The ice is not still, the ice is moving a little bit, and when it moves, it makes this sound. And maybe you can see the power plant from the straws. And they are using trash to burn over there, at least in one of the plants. And previously they used coal. I think they are moving away from coal now, because it's not really environmentally friendly to use fossil fuels. There is a nature track between this part and this part, right in the middle, in the forest part here. Yeah. I'm going to take this nature trail. And since there weren't any deer on the east side of the island, the east side of the north half, Usually they are there, but not today. So, if we are lucky, instead they are here. Because they tend to be on the north side. So now I'm a little bit in to the woods, so there's not so much light pollution from the trail. It's only my light pollution from my lamp. As you can see, the trees are quite cool here too, in this nature trail in the northern part. So, the natural forest goes through stages. If it's untouched for a hundred years, it looks a certain way. And if it's untouched for maybe two, three or four hundred years, then it starts to look like this. And there are not many areas in Sweden that still have natural forests. It's this, Bjarne, and a couple of kilometers to the east on the mainland. There is Engels uh, Ö, which also has natural forest. So this is the walking trail, nature path. And it crosses the BMX part in a few places. There I can see some bike tracks. One person seems to have bike there. <laughs> no, not BMX, it's MTB, mountain bike, sorry. mountain bike trail goes here. So now I'm out from this horrible electric lights. And I think the electric lights go out at 11 at night. So after 11 it's more beautiful here even on the normal trail. I 
can actually see the bus over there. The bus to be on there. Yeah, I think I have never seen deer here in this part of the wood. It's over there on the other side of the trail. I usually see them. Or where the bus is on the other side, near the skiing hill or after the skiing hill. In the big plains to the left or to the right. They can be on either side. That's where they are most commonly seen. Storm has taken down yet another tree. And this one is actually blocking the trail. So I can probably go where the other people are down here. Just hope that that doesn't come down on my head. Detailed. So that is the end of the two and a half kilometer trail and the five kilometer trail. So that's it, folks. I got a few more seconds before it turns off again the GoPro. So that's the end of the, two, of the five and two and a half, and that's the start. And over there, there is a restaurant which is open during daytime. See you next time. And I come back during the day and the summer, I visit more places in Gustav.